Hey guys, Jen Cravasi, Jekyll Bates, and welcome to another, well, not normal, presentation of a spray session from me. Yours truly, Jen Cravasi, Jekyll Bates. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. I've been commissioned as a collaborative partner to Catchco to put together some more artful pieces on some fish that are a little bit bigger than you normally see me paint for the very first, first epic Carl's Bait and Tackle store. Physical location. It's going to be in Fort Worth, Texas on River Run Bend Road. I am so amped to be a part of this. Not normal though because the colors that they've requested me do for these things are in the theme colors for their Mr. Tackle box. For example, the striper is going to be portraying their saltwater box. So instead of a normal silver blue match the hatch deal like this striper here, on a nine inch bull shad bait which is super cool but i'm going to be doing their theme colors for their saltwater box which is a really awesome looking blue gold and then some black so we're going to be doing more art type pieces instead of the match the hatch stuff but they're still going to be a lot of fun i'm on my last three pieces so i decided to strap a camera on for you guys and have a little bit of fun let's see what we can get through at least show you some of the stuff that i'm going to be doing for this theme i don't want to give the entire thing away but let's paint some really big fish and let's make it cool On these fish, you can't really see it so much on this one. You can a little bit here. I've still got some white to do. But you'll notice specifically on the striper here, or it's gonna be a striper, that I've got some gray. Now that is the KBS Fusion SEP. It's a self-etching primer. And just to refresh what that does, it helps paint and other things adhere to the surface below, be that metal or plastic or resin in this case. So we've already got the uh, self-etching primer. It's already been completely dried for about a week. Gave it plenty of time to cure. Now what I'm doing this morning is I'm getting ready to paint the actual colors on here. I'm just adding a base color of white. I think white for this is going to show the color the truest. But I'm also leaving just a little bit of gray in the background just to help with that depth. Now these, these replicas are already scaled. They were mold made, which is similar to how many swim baits are made. This is a resin mold cast. So, there we go. Let's finish that up. So this was pressed out of a mold put together in two halves. and then split open and what you get is what you see here. Now, a really good taxidermist would go on to turn it into something like this and I'm gonna show you what we've got here in the bull shad shop in the storefront and I'm gonna kinda give you some close-up detail on this guy because this is what a taxidermist would do to it. And this is a really phenomenal replica. It's supposed to represent this 14 pound bass. Unfortunately, they couldn't even find a big enough replica to represent it. But this is our 11 inch bull shed. This is the bass that ate it for Vance. And this is what we've got here in the bull shed storefront. So how cool is it that I get to do this for Catchco? having a little bit of background knowledge, not in taxidermy by any means. I'm thinking that most taxidermy, when they see the pattern that I'm putting on this, are gonna cringe. But this is what's so cool about Ketchco is that they want you to think out of the box. It's one of the things that has made Ketchco really, really successful is that they always are looking and thinking forward to the next generation, to maybe things that fish haven't seen before. And in this case, they wanted me to put an artistic flair onto this stuff. I'm excited to do that for you. So now that we are finishing up the base coat of white, let's figure out our, our next colors. 
something that I'm really lucky to be able to do is have a smartphone that's got a bunch of apps on it and in this case we're going to be using a bear color smart no I don't want notifications so I want to choose a color I need for it to be almost like a well almost uh, that color so here's let me show you what we're trying to match in the realm of what's happening and I don't know how how what color this is going to show on the camera on the lens but this is like a very cool Gulf Coast marine type blue for their saltwater fishing kit I have to match these colors to that striper so the only thing that I know to do on this is to take a, a paint deconstructor we're going to shoot a picture of that and then I'm going to go into my create there we go. I need to unmix here. So if you guys can see that, I get the choice. Unmix. I want to use a photograph. So up on the top right, load an image from the gallery. This. And we want to get right down to it. Blue sapphire. Okay, cyan, blue, white, black, blue sapphire. Fair enough, I can mix that. This is a cool tool. I've used it, oh gosh, it's probably been a couple of years when I lived back in Arkansas. I showed this app to you, but this is exact proportions that you would need. So if you have 100%, you want almost half of it to be black. Then you want almost 10% of it to be white. 12 to 15 percent to be blue and 31 percent to be cyan so how does that look i'm going to start with white and we're just going to mix until we get there do i know exactly what percentages we are going to do our best and this is a large fish so i'm going to mix a lot of paint on the white Does that look like 7%? It might. Let's hope so. Then we have, almost looks like an electric blue. So I think for this, I'm gonna use this pearlized blue. So you get almost the exact same proportions, so double the height that you had with the other. Now we're going to throw in a lot of opaque blue. And then we're going to mix down black until it looks good. And is that a bit haphazard? Yes it is, but when you have a color on mixer, it'll get you there. We're going to add a little black to it. The one thing I never trust, unfortunately, in any paint mixer app are the exact proportions. So I get real close and then I start to darken it. keep building on this and making it darker until we have the right effect and so you're not bored out of your mind we'll fast forward this if you guys want to learn how to mix these colors there's an app called color mixer just look it up on your iPhone or your Android device this is an opaque sky blue a wicked black jet black white basic white titanium white and pearlized blue the pearlized blue isn't the exact same color as the blue that's in here it's very close 
adds a little bit of flash because it's got that pearlescence in it. And I also, for the record, added just a little bit of this Vicay's blue or Vicky's? Vicky? Vicky? Don't know what that is. It's that blue. Similar to a Maui blue if it's Createx. Like with most things, a little goes a long way, but the issue is more how do we pour it? So what I have here is the end of a bottle of some Vallejo shifters. There's really nothing left in this bottle except for the bead that you mix it with. I'm just going to take this over a trash can, because that's my luck these days, and pour it in. I was able to fill this entire thing. I'm going to cap it. I've rinsed it off. And we're going to use what's in here first. We might use it all, we might not. But that's just my line of thought. Let's get these other two pieces out of the way for now. One thing I highly recommend because I, I end up wearing my paint old shoes, crappy pants, crappy shirt. Or a shirt that you're willing to sacrifice to get a bunch of paint because my hand looks like this at the end of the day. My whole body looks like this. We'll definitely go through it. If you want to lay in a little bit of texture, you can. You can angle this down so that you can still see a little bit of white. Kind of accent your fins, your scales. And if you get to the point where you're like, ah, this might be a little bit dark, or ah, that's not the right mix, you can always paint over it. This is just like anything else. No matter what you do, you can always fix it. It's just paint. Now these are gonna be fixed to a wall. So I have to be mindful that even though prominently only one half is going to show, one side, I still want to make it look good over the back a little bit because there will be some visibility on all sides. So you just want to make sure that enough of the back is covered to where you can see what the heck's going on. Also helps add that depth in. I talk about depth a lot because even if you're going to do more of an artistic piece like this, more of an abstract we would call it, you, you still want it to look as good or the best as you possibly can. Okay, I have got this thing standing on its end because you kind of want to do a color check and make sure that you're lining up with what the vision of this is. And so far, I know that this is backlit. A screen's going to project light from the inside out. 
So if it were not backlit, I'm relatively happy with how this is turning out. We can always lighten it a little bit if we need to, but so far, I think we're doing okay. Right now, I'm still going with this. The next thing we're gonna do is incorporate the rest of the colors into this, which are gold, white, and a little bit of black. The black will remain constant. They are gonna be the stripes and the striper. But we're gonna give it a little bit of gold, just like I've done on the other three, and I'm gonna show you those in a little bit. But this is a Liquitex acrylic ink. Acrylic is more important than alcohol in this because alcohol ink, number one, is much thinner. Number two, will not dry in the same consistency. And number three, have to add a lot more clear coat to it so that it doesn't run through. What I mean by running through is seep through the clear coat because it can. So we're gonna Add in detailing, just like we did on the others. We're going to kind of angle these across. If we work at an angle, it's going to be a whole lot easier to fill the depth in from the other side with black, because we will be doing that. And we're just going to kind of phase through this. Carefully from the back. I want to come across the top of this so I just catch the depth that I can even use my left hand on this. Just pull back and run it on one side. If you come at it from the other side, you're still going to see that blue, which is what you want. Add just a little bit more in here. And again, look at the angle that I'm shooting towards this fish here. Back from the other side. Grab all the highlights as best we can. The raised up on the cheek, the edge of the gill plate. Come back right over the gold with a little bit of black. And we're gonna do from the opposite side a little bit of darkening. side again. Come back and add some definition to the inside of the fins. From the opposite side here. A little bit more here. 
here, here, a little bit of shading. Where you would expect to find shading. There we go. And on the contour there. We're also going to darken the inside of the mouth. Now on this fish, there are other aspects of it that can be portrayed in white. And I'm going to touch on that just a little bit. I'm going to bring this up to the edge of the tail. Hit some of the fin. Other side as well. And I keep spinning this around, but it's okay. And just a little bit of lighter blue. I took the blue that we had made and added just a couple of drops of white into that just to kind of accent and a little bit lighter of a color. And now I'm going to do the same thing with gold. I just want to put a couple of different aspects into this before I put the black stripes on it. overdo it, but I do want to do it. The next part of the puzzle is making it look not just a little bit abstract, but kind of making it look cool. I've got a small detail brush, and this actually might be too thick. This has kind of been worn through a good bit, so let's get a smaller one. Let's see, what have I done with my brushes? There we go. this is just a zero you can see that right there and I've put a little bit of white paint down just like in all of my others I'm gonna bring the camera up just a little bit so you guys can see it I'm gonna add in just a couple of dots We're going to take our hand and steady it, give ourselves a base to work on, and then just detail the raised edges of this pec fin and dorsal fin, bottom fins, anal fin. Have 
have a bit of fun with this as we go. because that's kind of the hardest to get to. Repeat the same thing with all the other fins. brush stroke doesn't have to be perfect down the home stretch here.
last but certainly not least, we're going to do this dorsal. tip of this with black from this side. Before I do the stripes on the striper, I wanted to come back just a little bit and accent in just a little bit of white. Not much. Just enough. Bring my pressure down just a little bit. Add in just a little bit of red to these gills. Just a little bit of black to the tips, each of the fins. We're going to hit from this side. And also accent. So the kind of the last step to this is adding the stripes that are synonymous with a striped bass. So we're just going to move this down the body as we go. A 
We definitely want it a little bit thicker on these. The, the biggest trick to all of this is just trying to keep your marks equally distant from one another. So I'm trying to do this right around three quarters of an inch to an inch apart. And a striped bass doesn't have a whole lot of broken lines on it like its cousins white bass and wipers, the hybrids. So you want to try and keep that in mind as you're going down the fish. And then on a lot of the smaller, especially the juvenile fish, the belly, if we were matching the hatch and not doing an abstract here, is white. On this fish, obviously it's not. But you can see how lining that up here, we're going to go almost directly down that lateral line and I'm just pulling the paintbrush. This is not a fancy trick by any means. This is just a way to put some happy little lines on some happy little bass. And then just kind of go back and you can flare out some of the lines a little bit more just to get that that accent on there and the best way I know how to do this is with a flat brush because even when you're using the edge and not the actual flat part, it still fattens out a good bit. So the biggest thing is just keeping up with where your paintbrush is going. Now, if we were doing scale by scale individually, that would be a little bit tougher. And then we'll just kind of do that. just a couple broken lines down towards the belly and then if we have to go back and correct anything we can I'm just going to press it for a few seconds I did put a lot of glue on it not enough to make it squeeze out. One of the downsides to using any kind of super, super glue is that it will have a tendency, if it squirts out, to turn white. You don't want that. But while we are waiting on that to dry, I can grab my brush and the white paint and put my J.E.K. on there. Now that I've got this together, of course a train's going to roll through, but that's okay. I'm going to give this a quick heat set. And I want to do that because I also am going to go ahead and outline like I did on the other fish. And I'm going to show you the other fish in just a second. I'm going to outline these black stripes. I had been thinking about whether or not I wanted to do that. I've decided that yes, I definitely do. I'm just going to do one side. And I believe I'm going to do this back side. Make sure that my pin's working. And 
and see if I can bring you guys in. And it's not going to be completely through. Just a few spots on here. Just to kind of give it a little bit of extra, yeah, that. I hope that you have enjoyed this. If you want to see more randomness and some different out-of-the-box type things that I do, it's not always lures and swim baits. Sometimes it's kind of rad stuff like this. So I hope that you've enjoyed this one. I've definitely enjoyed putting these pieces together. I am going to show you what these baits look like all together that are headed down to Fort Worth, Texas. Thanks so much for being a part of this venture. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Baits.